<laughs> and welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you someone that I discovered on LinkedIn. And I started following him because his posts, his his inspiration was just so grand and so valuable that I was like, man, I, I've got to connect with this guy and have him on the show because he truly is somebody that I find inspiring simply from his post. And if his posts are that inspiring, how much more amazing can it be in person? You're, we're about to find out. Guys, y'all give it up for none other than Dustin Nelson. Thank you. <laughs> Dustin, can you hear your fan club? I, I can. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin, thank you so much for joining us today. I want to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Well, my name is Dustin, obviously. Nice to meet everybody who has not met me. Uh, I have served multifamily since, well, the age of 13. <laughs> I started as a weekend trash cleaner <laughs> to a part-time porter, finally moving into leasing, and I have not left since. My latest role was senior director of asset operations for Bromley Living. I technically was the president of Bromley Living, but I'm not really big on titles. And I did not get hung up on them. So I was like, let's dumb this down. <laughs> not that that's a dumbed down title, but I just didn't want that title. I wanted to be, I wanted to be seen as my peers of my equals, you know, because my company and my success and everything that I've ever done was actually built on the backs of my teams and mine as well. It was, everybody was involved. Everybody was a piece of this. You know, and I wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for those, you know, people on my team supporting me. So I wanted, I wanted a title that just almost made me sound like I was a community manager, which I actually loved that role. Being a community manager was one of my favorite roles to this day will remain. So <laughs> that is, that is awesome. And Justin, one of the things, you know, you talk about roles, but what I found so intriguing and so what I thought was cool is on your LinkedIn, you have noted I, I got to get this right because I think it's so cool. Chief optimist for all things multifamily. I mean, how how neat is that? Thank you. You know, this is an industry that I, I have so much faith in and see so much value in and I see so much talent. And it's from every walk of life. You know, everybody can add a piece to this industry, which means to me, this is a diehard industry that will never, ever, ever, it, it will see our struggles, but will never die because we are amazing. We are strong, we are we are unified. And that's what I love about this field and this industry and what we do. And when you look at multifamily, we are, we are the family. And whether we've met or we haven't, you know, whether we talk or we don't, or we've become a stranger, we're best friends, we're still a family. And at the end of the day, we follow each other for support and guidance and leadership. You know, and I love I love this field. There's nothing I could ever imagine doing different. Oh my gosh. And now I can tell right off the bat why you've got that title, Chief Optimist for all things multifamily, because you really do see the best in this industry. And I and I agree with you. I think there's there's so much potential, so much opportunity in the multifamily industry to do so much good if you have that optimism, that open mindset to be a part of it, to contribute, to add value. I think there's nothing you can't do in this industry with that mindset. Not the slightest. And here's the thing too. We don't just connect to each other. We connect people to home. Mm. We provide solitude. We provide sanctuary. We provide great workplaces, environments, culture. I mean, who wouldn't want to be here? And I always tell people, check out multifamily. This is the field to be. You're supporting your clients, your owners, your teams, your leadership, your your people that provide you support to make you strong. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine doing anything different. <laughs> I love it. I see why you got it. And I know why I've connected with you now. So it's so great. But you know, Dustin, I always love to connect with inspiring leaders and peek behind the curtain to see what inspires them. And so Dustin, I reached out to you. And I was like, you know, hey, what is inspiring you to be so amazing? And you shared with me, and, I, and, and it's kind of a unique approach that you shared with me, but I, I think it's so valuable. And there's two things that I want to talk about with you. The first one you shared with me is everyone around you inspires you. I think that's, that's, that's interesting. So share with us what that means to you. Why does everyone around you inspire you? Well, let me start. I, to this day, do not see myself as a leader. I got a lot of growing to do. 
I am the follower of the leader that shares with the leader shared with me to guide who I support. That that's that's me. That's that's Dustin. But I can tell you that the people I have followed through my career, and my my first leader that gave me so much was my mom. Mm -hmm. And after mom came my first leader, Michelle Ganey, Pinnacle, taught me how to do it right. The second one, Amber Anderson, taught me how to add the intelligence and the flair. After that came Brenda Barrett Wright, and she taught me so much. She taught me financials over the phone. She taught me emotional intelligence. She taught me how to guide and build. And then following just after that came my colleagues, my assistant manager, Susie Signor. She taught me, oh my God, she taught me patience. She taught me how to organize, how to take on a day when I didn't have that confidence. And then came Debbie Coppola. And I have got to say, with Debbie Coppola, is with Cushman Wakefield, formerly Pinnacle. When I worked with Debbie, she was our, you know, our the senior vice president. I swear, the city of Las Vegas multifamily was built on the shoulders of that woman. She is <laughs> one of, it, she has been the spokesman and the face, and she's built incredible teams, just like Brenda, just like Amber, just like Michelle. And these were my leaders that I followed. And when I look at these people, every part of me is a composition of them. Now, granted, mm. I may not have always appreciated that. I may have taken it for granted at times too, but as time passed on and those lessons mattered, they were right there in the back of my mind, ready to come to the surface. Wow. And all I can say is I have gratitude and I wasn't always my best, but when I started to get older and I started to mature and started to be responsible, mm -hmm. I always reverted back to what would these people do? And I'm so privileged. For example, I still get to see the magic of Debbie Coppola in this market. I still get to see the magic of Brenda Barrett right in this market. I get to see these people on, even from afar, I'm still learning. And it's incredible. And I'll tell you one of the best teachers I ever had outside of those higher leaders, you know, where they were leading multitudes of teams was my maintenance technician, Jesus Velasquez. He taught me how to install things. He taught me how to have patience. He taught me how to compose myself when it came to doing something I didn't know how to do because mechanically, I'm not the best. I installed a light bulb and I blew out a ballast and nearly started a kitchen fire. So we'll just go with that. I mean, you're talking to the guy who literally fixed a broke down car with the with the doggy scooper and a Swiffer the other day. But if I can do it, you can do anything. <laughs> But these are the people that taught me to believe in me. And, you know, these are the people that while I may not have appreciated at the time, but as I got older, I realized they weren't working against me. They were working towards me and for me, for me to learn. Mm. And I try to give that back now. Oof. So it's, I, I hope to someday be as good as these people. Yeah. And I hope to someday say, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be the next Amy Jerpy. Like, she was an amazing regional and still is. And I, you know, all these times I, I could have gotten so much from her. But you know, the downside of being young and youthful and excitable and all that is you don't take the time to appreciate what you got. Yeah. So that is where my inspiration comes from. Oh, it's so good. Dustin, I love how you've you've recognized and you've give, given credit to those people along the way to help you those alignments, if you will, along the, your journey to grow. Now, you may not have recognized it in the moment, but looking back, you're able to identify and say, these are, these are some amazing leaders that I've pulled best practices from or what not to do's from and has helped you get to this point. And I think the only way that you were able to do that was with that open mindset. Um, had you just been so closed-minded and blinders on you would never would have learned from those individuals and s secondly i have to say think about this everyone that is in the multifamily industry whether your title says you're a leader or not your team around you they're looking at you they're watching you and whether you're 
meaning, meaningfully or purposefully or intentionally leading that person, they're watching you and learning from you in some respect. And Dustin, is, you, what you just shared was a prime example of that. It's all about example. And I've learned over the years that leadership now is not about being the boss or the point and click person, it's about servitude mm. and serving the teams that support you. Wow. you know, it, it, it's crazy. Um, I got a really good, hard look at this not too long ago. I met a gentleman from Collect Tech. His name was Nick Owen, and I still talk to him on occasion. But, you know, we all went to that eviction moratorium and we had all the bad debt and all that. And I was like, okay, Bromley, we're selling off assets now. And I've got to try to recover this money. I didn't know how to do it. And he demonstrated leadership to me, giving me the patience and the time to show me. It wasn't a sales pitch. He wanted me to understand the processes and the, the protocols and what has to legally be done and how to engage with that. And I am so in debt to that, man. You know, I'm like, collect tech for the rest of my life. <laughs> so You're a fan. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just like my vendors, like Heidi Anderson, you know, she's incredible. Um, you know, I, I, she's, you know, I, I've used trash ballet services through her. I've used printing. And it's all people that I've learned skill sets from. And it's amazing. It You find inspiration all around you. Yeah. That shows you leadership. But then when you go to the ones that have done it and have paid their dues. Uh-huh. Like Debbie Coppola, like Brenda Barrett, like, you know, all of these, all of these individuals that gave you something. I mean, I have a long list of people that I've learned so much from. These are the ones that stand up the most mm -hmm. because I, I'm so grat so much gratitude, so grateful for these people. I love that. That's the gratitude. Having that is an incredible gift because gratitude is something that it multiplies energy. And when you're able to have that gratitude, it's it's incredible. Now, Dustin, you've got a story. This is the second inspiration point. It's a story that you shared with me that I found unbelievably uh, inspiring. It's what I would call a testimony. And I would love for you to share this testimony of how you overcame some potentially in some people's minds would be just too much. I can't overcome this, but you overcame and I'd love for you to share that with us. Yeah, um, so this this brings me back to a place in time. It was actually the worst time of my life. And it was right at the start of the best time of my life. So it was like two ships. One of them was a Titanic, the other one was a Carnival Cruise. And <laughs> one was going down. So, but it wasn't me. Um, <laughs> but in 2016, I started noticing some changes in my personality. I just thought I was tired, not sleeping. I was grouchy, I was irritable and I was not my best self. And uh, I was combative. I was high, high, low, low, didn't know what was going on. Making snap decisions, bad choices. And then one day in 2018, I was sitting at my desk and all of a sudden I couldn't see. And my vision returned, but I had the worst headache ever. And it was powerful. And in the months following up to that, I had lost my hearing in my left ear and my part of my vision, my right eye. I had a constant ringing in my ear. And I eventually had to leave where I was and, you know, um, get an apartment and leave my job. And I lost my apartment and I lost, I went and lived in my car. And I was taking a shower at a truck stop because it was $1.25 and I'm just really hygienic. And I'd like to apologize to everybody at Elysian Stone Lake. It was me using your shower. Um, <laughs> but uh, I was not in the best format. And I was at this truck stop and the truck I was living in, or the, the car I was living in was repossessed because I couldn't afford it anymore. So I went and lived in a park. And if it wasn't for the kindness of of these people that worked at a like a kino place down the street who would like give me soda for free and let me sit in their machines for a dollar and hang out there so I was not in the heat and uh, gave me shelter, you know. And then Brenda, who brought me back to work, I would never have came back from any of this. But what it turned out to be is on my journeys back to a with AMC, I was able to get health insurance because I got to tell you I did go on welfare. And that health insurance wasn't that good. They said I was having caffeine withdrawal. 
I never stop. So you can't have a drop, so you have to stop drinking. Um, <laughs> I should be on the Red Bull bottle, I'm telling you. It turned out I had a blood clot in my brain, and it was quite far along. And I was having transient ischemic strokes, or TIAs, transient ischemic attacks, and every symptom I had was uh, indicative of that. And so I had to watch my life fall apart around me. And I had to go from homeless to trying to rebuild a career. And if it wasn't for Brenda and it wasn't for the support, and I have got to give my gratitude once again to Debbie Coppolo. Um, she was giving me kind recommendations and doing what she could to help me build my career back along with Brenda. And Brenda put me back to work and gave me that second shot. Granted, she did send me to New Jersey. I'm not the biggest fan of New Jersey. I can't drive in New Jersey to save my life. Me and the Jersey Turnpike are not, we're not buddies. I love Wawa. That's a, that's a great little gas station. But I am not a, I'm not a, I'm not a Jersey driver. Um, so I got sent there into Ohio and all that, but I got to get, build my career back. And when I was finally well enough, um, and I, I succeeded through medication and treatment, I was able to go and join these two brothers at Bromley and build a brand and build a community and build a team. And I got to tell you, you know, no matter how bad things are, Mm -hmm. If you hang in there and you believe and you work for something you want, and you push for it, and you say, I could roll over and die right now, but I'm not going to, you can have that. You can have what you want. Just don't give up. Mm. Don't throw in the towel. Don't say my life is over. Yeah, I never got my hearing back, but my memory, because I did lose memory, my memory started coming back. I got to tell you, it came in handy at time, not remembering certain things. But, um, but you know, it started coming back and you know, my vision is 90% restored. But I can tell you that in your darkest moments, whether you're facing unemployment or you're facing homelessness or you're facing an illness or just a general everyday fear, hang in there. Like, like any illness, this too shall pass. Ooh. So having that confidence and, and belief in yourself you know, but when I came back from all of that too, I had to go relearn a lot of things. Patience, emotional intelligence, to accept criticism, mm -hmm. to see it as a praise. If somebody's even taking the time to criticize your work, that's because they're trying to help you improve. Yeah. So, you know, when I came out of that, I had a lot to redo, but it was worth it. Dustin, and, and I just, it's its hard to kind of put into words the, the amazingness of, of your testimony and your perseverance to not give up. Because if you, like you said, you hang in there and you continue to have the courage and confidence to get back to what you want, you can. But you have to have that courage and confidence to to keep working. And, and I think what is most amazing through all of this, you know, you working so hard to get back to where you are today through all of those difficulties and, and hitting rock bottom, if you will, is the alignments around you that you established beforehand and that helped you through these, these tough times, helped you get to where you wanted to be as you continue to grow in your journey as well. Just just a, an amazing testimony, Dustin, and, and I'm so inspired by your story and I, and I know there's a reason why I found you on LinkedIn to have you on the show because I you this story is so incredible. And thank you for sharing. And Dustin, we're getting close to the end of our time and it's just been, it's been so pleasurable to talk to you, so amazing. But I wanna give you a chance before we wrap up to share a closing thought with us. Well, I always tell people, Mr. Rogers used to say, in any bad situation, look for the helpers. My theory is, or my, my statement, excuse me, is look for the leaders. If, if you're trying to improve and educate and be more than what you are, and a lot of times what you are is just fine, mm -hmm. but if you want to grow, look for leadership, look for inspiration, even if they don't know you're watching. Find an example, and at the end of the day too, when everything is said and done, and the only person you have to fall back on is yourself, believe in yourself enough to do something great. Mm. That's so good. Dustin, there's just so many great things in this conversation. I just, we could unpack this for days with you. And I think there's so much value in what you've shared with us, but just awareness, perseverance. I think those two things are just incredible stories uh, from your experience, Dustin. And I thank you so much for sharing with us today. 
Guys, thank you so much for joining us today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. Make sure you follow Dustin on LinkedIn. He's got some incredible content. I got inspired. I want you guys to be inspired just as just the same. Make sure you connect with him. Great alignment. This guy is the guy. Thank you so much, and we will see you on the next episode. Take care, everyone.